Hello, hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the video. Okay, so a month and a half ago, I hit 10,000 subscribers, which is insane. Up until that point, I hadn't really celebrated any subscriber milestones, but I knew I wanted to do something special since 10k was kind of a big deal in my brain. I saw other artists were drawing their viewers' characters to celebrate subscriber milestones, and so I just kind of thought, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I posted a community post asking for your characters, blah blah blah, and, uh, I got 300 responses. 300! Just so many of y'all's characters, slash children, slash babies to pick from, and they were just all so cool and so pretty, I, the pressure was on. I had said on my Google form and post about this that I was probably only gonna draw six characters, but, 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 I could not decide on which characters to choose. And then, as I started to work on this video, I hit 20,000 subscribers. Okay, wow, I need to do a bit extra with this special. So yeah, the title isn't a lie. I decided to celebrate me hitting 20,000 subscribers instead of 10,000 now. I'm going to be drawing 20 of my viewers' characters. Dear lord, this took me longer than it needed to. Also, I know I typically do traditional art on this channel, but I decided to draw these characters digitally because 1. Editing this video if I had done every character traditionally would have been an actual nightmare, and 2. I wanted to stay true to the character's colors and digital art just makes that easier, and 3. I just want to start making more digital art content, that's it. Anyways, let's get into the characters now! Before diving into the actual art for this video, I was just gonna sketch one or two of the characters I chose to see if I actually felt up to the task of drawing 20 characters. And just to get the feel of digital art again. Since I've been focusing on YouTube more, my attention has been more directed towards traditional art. Uh, I've been focusing so much on my sketchbook lately and it kind of feels like it's my job to finish it as fast as possible, I guess. I felt a lot less grounded in my artistic journey as of late, but that's neither here nor there, who cares? Like I said, I wasn't intending to draw all of the characters yet. However, as you can see, this entire file ended up being me drawing like 15 of the characters. So, that's that I guess. I didn't create this file with the intent of using it in any video at all, so sorry if the speed paint quality is actual garbage. I promise it gets better. So you'll see as I draw most of the individual characters that I'm just going to be pulling sketches from this file. Sorry, I am so unorganized. Here are all of the sketch pages anyways. Now let's jump into the individual OCs. Up first we have Roby August by at Servant Clown on Instagram. When I tell you I saw this character and it was love at first sight. To be completely honest, there were only a handful of characters that I knew I was going to be drawing from the beginning, and Roby was definitely one of them. I'm a sucker for colorful character designs, and they just look too fun not to draw. In the character description they sent me, they mention that Roby is a part of their high school's band and they play the trombone, and then on the reference sheet they sent me, they said that Roby loves her instrument but sucks at it, which is just so relatable. I feel that way about art sometimes. Roby was definitely one of the easiest characters to draw. I had a good idea about what kind of pose to give her and I think I executed it pretty well overall. And I do want to mention, I took a little bit of creative liberty with Roby's shorts. In my original sketch, they were puffy and cuffed, but then as I started my line art, I noticed on the reference image, the ends just went outward. I don't know how to describe it. I ended up just doing what was on the original sketch because I thought it fit the character and I figured drawing every single character one-to-one -one from the reference images would be really boring. I'm definitely glad I started this video by drawing Roby because she was just an all-around easy and fun character to draw. Thank you so much Servant Clown for submitting her. I love Roby so much. Next up we have Dr. Daniel Spector by at Mimisus on Instagram. Fun fact. Whenever I first opened the link for this man, the first thing I did was text my boyfriend a picture of it saying, Look at this man someone requested. Sheesh! Love at first sight number two. His design is so, so cool. 
I don't usually engage in media where there are scientist sorts of characters, but anytime I do, I love them. So it was only natural that I automatically felt attached to this guy. Here's a bit of his character description. He's a chill, mad scientist who can turn himself into a ghost. He can transfer quote-unquote life energy in the needle on his back and go back and forth. It's super bad for his health though, because he's basically a reanimated corpse. And it means he often has to steal life energy from other people. Woo, angst. I, I want to see more content of this guy. I am so intrigued by his story and character. Maybe Sue's teased us with the woo angst at the end of their explanation, but like, I want to know exactly what the angst is. I'm just kidding, of course. Absolutely no pressure. This character just seems so cool. As for drawing him, I had so much more trouble than I did with Roby. My original sketch for him was extremely rough and bad, like it was just bad. So I scrapped it completely and I decided I would settle for his pose being almost exactly like the one on the reference sheet. I really tried to give all these guys slightly dynamic poses, but I have to do 20 of these characters so it's okay if I get lazy sometimes. And for those looking at my sketch and my line art and thinking, wow that head is way too small, don't worry, it's the last thing I fixed, I noticed it. Overall, I have slightly mixed feelings about how this turned out. I was so looking forward to drawing him and I, I don't know, I just feel like I could have done better. I still think it looks good though, I love your character Mimisus, thank you so much for submitting him. The next character is Zack by at Ocrud on YouTube. Before I even opened the character Google form, I knew that if Ocrud submitted a character, whoever it was, they'd get drawn. Ocrud has been one of my biggest supporters on YouTube thus far. If I remember correctly, they were the first person to comment on my first ever YouTube video. That is, if we exclude my IRL friends. Either way, they've been here since the very beginning. I've also become pretty familiar with Ocrud's characters. Like I said, I'm drawing their character Zack, but full transparency, I was really hoping they would submit their character Feline, which is the character I ended up drawing in the Thought Bubble. Feline and Zack are actually a couple, so I decided to settle for the fact she was not the character Ocrud submitted. I would include her somehow, and so I decided to add Zack thinking about her because they're all cute and stuff. Also, the fact that they're not a canon couple is a crime against humanity. In the initial sketch, I knew I wanted to include Kirby in some way, just because I associate Kirby with Ocrud and all of their characters. And then I thought, Zack with giant Kirby plush. And so that's what I did. The process for drawing him was pretty straightforward, but I, I definitely procrastinated on drawing his shoes. I, I could not get them right. But whatever, here's the finished Zack! Thank you for submitting him, Ocrud. I really hope he gets over his crippling anxiety. The fourth character is Lila by at Niwos here on Instagram. The first thing that stood out to me about Lila is that the bottom half of her hair is pink. Just like my character Lunabelle, my absolute baby girl, so of course I had to draw Lila because of that. And then, I read the character description, and it says as follows. Lila is based on this axolotl plush with funky sunglasses that a friend gave to me. And there was a photo of it on the reference sheet. Lord, that stood out to me, because I am no stranger to basing characters off of toys. Two of my main OCs, Calvin and Bill, were originally based off of a unicorn and cat hand puppet I had when I was in middle school. And I still use those characters to this day. So, as you can probably tell, there were a lot of aspects that made me want to draw her. The cherry on top is that Lila is absolutely adorable. I did not struggle with drawing her at all. She was a breeze. The only thing I really had any problems with was translating the colors from the photo into my style. Since the reference image Niwa's here sent me was a traditional art photo, I knew that if I just color dropped the colors straight from the reference image, then they would just look really muddy, so I had to correct that. That was about the only thing I struggled with though, other than that she was very, very easy. So here's the finished Lila! I love them so much, thank you for submitting them Niwa's here, they were so fun to draw. Quick side note, I decided to take a little burden off of my shoulders from drawing 20 characters. I would designate every fifth character I draw to be a little doodle character. You know, characters that kind of remind me of the little doodle cat guy that I have. So now, it's time for our first quarterly doodle guy. And the first one is... Pillow by Cloverfield on Toy House. I... 
I am in love with Pillow. Let me read you all Star's description because it is the cutest thing. Pillow is a plushy cat and is a magical being who gives good dreams to those who cross his path. If you feed a wild cat and have a good dream, you might have been blessed by Pillow. Oh my lord. This is like the cutest creature I have ever seen. The backstory concept is adorable too. I need a plush of this guy. Please, please give me merchandise of Pillow. I decided to draw him with my other favorite cat character of all time, that being Lolly from Animal Crossing. Both are adorable, and now they're having a tea party. I- I am in love. Thank you so much, Cloverfield, for letting me draw your little guy and letting me be self-indulgent for a minute. He- I- I will never get over him. The next character is Casey by at ZombieKitty on Twitter. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there were only a handful of characters that I knew I was going to be drawing from the beginning, and Casey was another one of them. Just the rainbow aesthetic, the dumb little cat guy whose name is Ari, I, I had to draw her. I had to draw both of them. Casey is described as being a very quiet and antisocial kid. They live in a cyberpunk world and they play the electric guitar, and they're also the lead guitarist in their cyberpunk band, which is just so... So cool. I'm writing the script right after doing the drawing for him, and now I'm kind of regretting not drawing him with the hypothetical guitar, but it's okay. It's fine. I'm all good. Casey took me a bit longer to draw than the rest of the characters so far. Uh, I'm not sure why, because I didn't struggle with him at all. I had the sketch pretty much down from the beginning. The line art was very easy. My guess is that it was probably the coloring. That definitely took me a while since there were a lot more tiny colorful details than the rest of the characters so far. Anyways, I love KC and I love Ari. Here is the finished piece. Thank you so much Zombie Kitty for submitting him. Next up, we have Luma by at Feeling Blue 44 on Pinterest. Luma has such a cute yet simple character design. Plus, her main aesthetic seems to be the moon and stars, similar to my character Luna Bell, again. I, I think I might be biased towards a certain type of character. Who knows? On top of that, she also just kind of reminded me of my old self-insert OC that I had in middle school. Not because of her looks, but because of her personality. Her character description says she's very moody slash tired, and also very closed off from the world. She only trusts very particular people, and she lives in a setting similar to Gravity Falls or Amphibia. Which, I forgot about that until the end of the drawing. I wish I had put more thought into what pose to give her. I did not know what kind of pose to do for her personality, other than hands in her pocket while she's standing, or arms are crossed while she's standing. So I decided to do the former with one arm out, and I had just no clue what to do with that arm. At the very end of the drawing, I remember Feeling Blue said that Luma lives in a world like Gravity Falls or Amphibia. I haven't seen Amphibia, but I have seen Gravity Falls, and I know weird, unnatural things happen in that show. And the blank space on top of her hand was driving me crazy. So I gave her a little star thing, I guess. I don't know. Here is the finished drawing. Uh, I feel like I could have done better, but I still love Luma. Thank you for submitting her. The next character is Keith by at MaxFrog4 on Twitter. This guy might be from Twitter, but I was mutuals with him on TikTok, and I loved his art. So whenever I saw that Max submitted a character, I was like, oh yeah, I'm drawing this guy. And I just, I love Keith. I feel like most of the characters I've drawn so far have had really colorful designs or just really outgoing character personalities, and Keith is definitely the outlier with all of them. According to his character description, he's very shy, gentle, and awkward. He's not smart, he just wants to be liked by others. I love that. I kind of relate. I'm stupid too. <laughs> X-Frog also mentions that Keith and his family are very religious, specifically Catholic, which is so intriguing to me. I feel like religion isn't really thought about when people make characters, so it was really interesting to see it mentioned here. I like that. In fact, a lot of my own characters are religious. However, the religion is not real, it's very much made up. <laughs> As for drawing him, I don't know if it was the pose I drew him in, or just his design, but this piece, start to finish, took me like literally 20 minutes. It was so easy. Here's the finished piece. Thank you so much, Max Frog, for submitting Keith. 
Next up, we have Yasuna by at Jeksui on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Before I talk about Yasuna, this drawing is kind of what made me realize, oh crap, my style is very much being influenced by whatever the reference image looks like. Uh, whoops. I've never really had a consistent style anyways, so it's not like this was unexpected. But yeah, I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. Especially since my last two drawings just felt kind of cartoony, and then I get to Yasuna and I'm like, hmm, big buff woman, might as well give her realistic anatomy-ish. I, I know it doesn't look the best, but still. Anyways, wow, I, I love Yasuna. Her character description says she has magical fire powers, which I love because one, I'm a Sagittarius, a fire sign, and two, my favorite Pokemon type growing up was fire. So yeah, I'm basically destined to love anything fire related. On top of that, I I love buff women. <laughs> Vi and Savika from Arcane, Mwah. S tier character design. And Yasuna, ooh Yasuna is so pretty. Though I don't think I captured exact likeness in this piece. Uh, there's something off about it, but overall I like how it turned out. Here's the finished Yasuna! I feel like I could have done better, but thank you so much for submitting her, Jeksui. Now, it's time for our next quarterly doodle guy. And this one is Finley by at Hollow Celebration on YouTube. Finley reminded me so much of my little doodle cat guy that I have. She's like him, but with clothes on, I guess. I feel like they'd really get along. Finley was so fun to draw. I know I didn't really get the anatomy right and the shoes look weird. Honestly, I started getting frustrated about that while drawing her, until I realized she's a doodle character. It's okay, it doesn't have to look exactly right. And then I started having more fun. For the most part, I just drew everything straight from the reference image, but I did change the colors from the reference a little bit to better suit my style. I didn't have much to say about this character, but thank you so much Mads for submitting Finley. And now we're officially halfway done with the characters. Next up is Dawn by at Cheese Stick Lizard on Tumblr. Dawn is another character I knew I was going to be drawing since the beginning, and I... I love her. Her character description says she's a little ram girl who runs a flower shop, which is just so adorable. It's also the shortest character description I was given, but you know, I respect the simplicity. Since the description says that she runs a flower shop, I really wanted to incorporate flowers in some way into this piece since they weren't on her original design. And so, as you can see, I just drew her holding a little flower pot. Pretty cute. I didn't have any trouble drawing Dawn. In fact, she was probably my favorite character to draw out of all of the characters in this video. I think maybe it was because of the simplicity of her design, or maybe it was just because I thought her design was so adorable and I was looking forward to drawing her. I don't know. Either way, she was easy. Also, tiny side note, at this point I started putting a yellow overlay onto most pieces just to make the colors look a bit more interesting. Uh, I didn't go back and do it to previous pieces because this video was just already taking so long. Anyways, here's the finished Dawn. I, I love Dawn. I wish her flower company nothing but success. Next up is Lancer by at Illustbox on Instagram. Drawing Lancer made me face my fears. My fears being pretty anime boys. Something about them just makes me angry. I don't know, anime men specifically have to have some sort of age or grime to them for me to like them. And this guy? He's just too gorgeous. I can't with him. I do want to say though, I don't actually hate Lancer at all or his design. I think it's lovely. I just don't usually draw pretty boys, so I decided with this character, I'll do something different. Anyways, despite the fake beef I had with this character, he was a blast to draw. I kind of get the appeal of it now. Especially the hair. The hair was so, so fun. His character description says that Lancer is upbeat and a bit of a troublemaker, so I gave him a pose and an expression that I think gives off that vibe. Maybe more troublemaker than upbeat? I don't know. I definitely think the anatomy, especially with the legs, looks a bit janky. Something about it just looks off. I think it's the shoes. Anyways, here is the finished Lancer. I feel like I've come full circle with him. I now appreciate pretty anime boys more. 
Thank you, Illustrbox, for inspiring that change in me. Next is Mithril by default setting on DeviantArt. This was actually the very first character submitted to the Google form, and he is just so cool. When I was younger, I used to be obsessed with sharks and deep sea ocean creatures, and Mithril just looks like a deep sea ocean creature with like extra swagger to him. I that sounds so stupid. I don't know. It's it's sick though. I had a lot of fun drawing him, probably because he was the only aquatic adjacent character that I chose to draw if not the only anthro character, if I'm remembering correctly. I felt like I could be a lot looser with his posing, and it definitely shows. It's nothing too out there, like, I don't think any of the poses that I chose for this video are groundbreaking and fantastic, but I like this one especially. As you can see, I had to change his colors a little bit, just because the ones in the reference image were a bit too dark for my style. However, I still think they ended up looking pretty good. Plus, I really liked adding the glowing effects on his eyes, and like, the eye on his forehead? Is that another eye? I don't know. God, this design is just so cool. So, here is the finished Mithril, another one of my favorites, actually. Thank you so much for submitting him. Next is Holly by Monaki Sato on Instagram. To be completely honest, I don't have much to say about this girl other than I love her design and drawing her was very, very easy. Like most characters, I had her sketch pretty much down since the beginning, and I only changed a few things like her leg uh, and her arm a little bit. Yeah, I could not decide if I wanted her arm to be like up or down for a hot minute, but as you can see, I finally chose. Drawing Holly just felt like a respite from drawing the rest of the characters. She doesn't have too many details on her design, she's just wearing a school outfit, and I really appreciated that. She's a cute earth element girl. Uh, she's described as being a shy yet hardworking and determined student, which really gives off season one Twilight Sparkle vibes, and I love that for her. Like I said, I don't have much to say about her, <laughs> but drawing her was fun, and I love the little vines that she has. Thank you, Monaki Sato, for submitting her. Our next doodle character is actually a doodle couple, so this entry counts for two characters in this video. And it's Sprout Mallow and Bear by Sprout Mallow on Instagram. These two characters are adorable. Sprout Mallow said that the bunny and bear are based off of herself and her boyfriend, and I love that. I actually have two characters that represent me and my boyfriend too, which is part of the reason that I chose to draw them. With the pose, I wanted to do something more interesting than just cute characters holding hands or something like that, so I plopped them on a couch and they're watching a scary movie together. And in the middle of doing the line art, I went to go watch the speed paint thus far, and I accidentally stopped recording. Great. <laughs> so here's the finished piece. I love these characters. They are so cute. To be straight up, in the middle of making this video, life started getting pretty hectic for me. I don't even know if y'all will be able to see a difference in quality with the last four characters, but if you do, that's why. I say all that because for the last four characters, I'm going to be doing a lightning round. I won't be talking too much about them. If any of these characters happen to be yours, dear viewer, just know it's nothing personal. I love all of their designs. They just fell victim to my burnout. And let's start it. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and get it done. Fourth to last, we have Imani by at Sleepyhead Toby on TikTok and Instagram. They said Imani is based on the love core aesthetic, which is just so adorable. She was also very easy to draw, I had her pose down since the beginning, changed up the outfit colors a bit from the reference, but overall I really like how she turned out. I love her roller skates too, They're, that's such a cute addition. Thank you for submitting her sleepyhead Toby, I think she turned out pretty good. Next is Avi by at Polygon on YouTube. Dear lord, I struggled with this character. I couldn't come up with a pose for her on my own, and so I looked up a Splatoon emote reference. I found one I liked. But as I was doing the line art, I realized as I was drawing the pose that the pose I chose obscures the front part of her design, which is what the reference sheet was showing me. Crap. At this point, I was too tired to even think about redoing her because I was drawing her at like midnight. Uh, I may revisit her one day to fix my mistakes, but it won't be for a YouTube video. I love the character though, and I don't think my drawing is bad on its own. Here it is. Thank you for submitting, Avi. Second to last, we have Davaway by Manaka Art on Instagram. 
As you can see, I went an entirely different route with this character. So far, I've done a full body drawing of every single OC I was given. But in the middle of making this video, I had done like an arcane and spider-verse study with my character Lunabelle. And I thought maybe it would be fun to reattempt that with this character because I'm tired of drawing full bodies, I just want to do something different. And so I did this. It's definitely not as successful as my Lunabelle. I still have a lot more to learn about these styles and rendering, but anyways, here's the character. I, I think it turned out pretty good, thank you for submitting them. And last but not least is our very last doodle character which is bugs by at not on instagram this is him this is it we're we're done thank you all so much for watching especially if you made it this far in the video i'm not exaggerating when i say this is the most effort i have put into a youtube video thus far uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos from me in this format, be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe if you want to, and let me know what kind of digital art content you're interested in. I want to do more stuff with my OCs and more art studies, but if there's any other kind of content that you'd like to see from me, just let me know. As long as it's not Spider-Verse, I'm not doing any more Spider-Verse videos, please stop asking. I will say though, pretty much a week after I upload this video, I'm going to be moving away for college. College prep is also a part of why this video took me so long to make. I've been pretty preoccupied with that. So don't get surprised if my upload schedule gets a little whack because of that. However, if you still want to keep up with me off of YouTube, I'll be more active on my Instagram and Pinterest. Both are at Josta, so be sure to check those out. And I'm done. I'm gone. I'm tired. Thank you all for your OCs. I am not doing a video like this again anytime soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!